Also, The Guardian reported that Ukrainian military leaders would like to strike Russia's military installations near the Moscow and St. Petersburg. They think that this strategy could bring the war closer to its end. What is your take on that? And don't you think that Moscow, St. Petersburg and other major cities could be a key terrain of this war from a psychological standpoint? Well, in fact, there have been strikes against targets in Moscow. And I, what distinguishes Ukraine from Russia, of course, is that Ukraine is going after legitimate military targets according to the laws of land warfare and the Geneva Convention. Russia is indiscriminately targeting uh, civilian infrastructure, again, the hospitals even, and, and often the first responders and so on, uh, all of which clear violations of the Geneva Convention, which is what they've done ever since the beginning. I mean, anybody who's in Kiev obviously should go to Bucha and hear what took place there, uh, which to me suggested that the, the Russians have a culture of committing war crimes, not a culture of trying to observe the Geneva Convention. Uh, look, I was privileged to command two wars and had five combat commands as a general officer. There were mistakes made. Civilians were killed. We had Abu Ghraib. We had other terrible mistakes. But we tried very hard to adhere to the Geneva Convention and the laws of land warfare. Russia seems to me tries to not pay attention to them. Uh, and so, sure, uh, everything that is a military, legitimate military target should be targeted. The challenge, of course, is that there's always trade-offs. What does it cost to create a, a missile or a drone or what have you that can hold those targets at risk, attack them? S somehow Ukraine attacked the uh, Murmansk all the way uh, in the northern, northeastern or northwestern part of uh, Russia, very important port. Uh, so the capacity and capability of Ukraine continues to evolve and, and to improve and again get longer range, more precise, larger munitions, and so forth. There's a limiting factor here, though, too, uh, and that is that just that this takes money. Uh, and I sat with the minister, former minister of uh, strategic industries the other night with all of the other ministers and people that are leading various efforts. Uh, you'll have heard there was a public announcement that Ukraine wanted to manufacture a million drones in a 12-month period. That's already now, it's several times that. I don't want to get more precise than that. But, and it could be even more. The capacity is much greater. The limiting factor is not capacity. It's actually the money uh, to uh, enable the uh, use of that capacity. So th these are all ongoing. They're very, very impressive. We should be doing everything we can to enable them, but noting that there are always going to be trade-offs. You cannot do everything everywhere all at once you have to figure out where you're going to focus. And, and that, I think, is ongoing as well, because we had good conversations with other uh, leaders who are the ones that are guiding the overall strategy and the overall approach to this war. And again, having been privileged to command two wars at the very top, um, I think I know a little bit about what it looks like to do it reasonably well. Uh, and the Ukrainian leaders are doing magnificently. But what is your take on the, such deep strikes inside Russia, even near the Moscow and St. Petersburg, but with the U.S. Western made weapons? Well, I don't think you have uh, weapons that can range that. So I don't I just don't think it's a relevant question, frankly. Th this would have to be Ukrainian systems. But should Ukraine have uh, such weapons from your perspective? This, now we're into something that's very, very different. And it's not just the range. It's, you know, how do you launch these systems What is, and all the rest of this? And I, I don't think that you're going to see decisions made to, to provide those. Keep in mind that they're also incredibly costly. We can afford that. Our systems are very, very, very expensive. And actually comparable systems, if you compare the Switchblade 300 or the 600, which is actually an anti-armor suicide drone made by the US, it is many, many, many times more expensive than what Ukrainian companies are building here uh, in Ukraine and changing and evolving and refining all the time. We saw different, uh, I've seen these different systems. I've seen the version 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and they say they're already working on 4.0 and constantly evolving so that you have the guidance systems that you, you deal with the realities of electronic warfare. Do you have a link to the, all of this? Um, and again, the cost here is so vastly less 
than it is for something that actually isn't even comparable in capability. But if you start to get into the world of the really long range munitions, you're talking about shooting huge sums of money downrange. And I just don't think in 61 billion is a lot of money, but then you slice it into the categories and you figure what category would fund that kind of presidential drawdown authority and transfer. And you're going to, that money is going to go pretty quickly. There's just one reason why it's great. For example, that other NATO countries are providing the F-16s instead, instead of the U.S. having to do that because the cost of those is so substantial.